Hey Pokédad fan club, this is Pokédad, and uh, today we're doing another deck profile. I know that last week I did Giratina EX, um, and I'm doing it again this week, uh, and I'll tell you why uh, in a moment. But I first want to just tell you, all of you, I apologize I didn't get more videos out this past week. Uh, but it was really a week of, you know, sometimes you just have to spend time in prayer and meditation. And I was really spending a lot of time uh, talking to God this this week. Uh, so, you know, sometimes those things are just really, really important. And so uh, that spending more time doing that left me less time in Pokemon. And so... Uh, I apologize for that, but I just felt like I needed to kind of recharge my batteries and, um, you know, get recharge my spirit a little bit. So anyway, with that being said, though, let's get right into the deck. And uh, yes, I'm going with another Giratina EX deck, and I guess you could say I'm kind of hopping on the bandwagon with Giratina. Last week we looked at the Giratina Pyroar EX. Pyroar deck, and then uh, the early on uh, when I think before Ancient Origins actually released, I did a Giratina Vile Plume, and I think most people have come to the conclusion that Giratina Vile Plume is not really as good as it could be. Yeah, if you can get a Vile Plume early, you may have win conditions, but the chance of getting it is really difficult. So. But I've been playing with Giratina, and because Stage 1s are just so popular right now, I mean Raichu, um, Vespaquin, Metacham, Night March. Night March is not really a Stage 1, but it's basically the same idea where it's like these aggressive, these aggro decks that are just building up really fast and knocking you out. I think it really makes it hard for Megas to really do well in the meta right now uh, and EX is alike because you're trading off two for one sometimes so and I feel like the meta right now is moving to so much stage one decks uh, and that there's got to be something that counters it and I find that Giratina EX is that deck that counters stage one decks very well uh, but also um, competes well against mega decks and even does well against opposing um, EX decks. So with that being said, let's just review Giratina. Maybe there's a few people here that are kind of new and uh, we need to talk about it. We're going to go a lot more quickly though since we've already looked at these decks. Now the deck version that I'm playing today is a very trolly version, okay? It's quite annoying and your opponents will actually will scoop very quickly uh, many times and because the win condition is very uh, easy for us however even if we go into a long battle this deck really has staying power uh, because of all the energy denial we have so we'll talk about that in a moment all right giratina ex though renegade pulse Megas can't hurt Giratina unless a Hex Maniac is played or unless Hydreigon EX is used. Uh, and even then, it's going to. I'm not Hydreigon. Um, yeah, pretty much Hex Maniac the only thing that's going to break through Giratina uh, unless they don't evolve to the Mega and they just use the regular form. That is possible. That can happen. So, um, Megas can't hurt him. Chaos Will. This is a locking deck, okay? So Chaos Will does only 100 damage, and it takes 4 energies to charge it up. But the opponent can't play any tools, special energy, or stadium cards. All three of these are so very useful right now in the meta. Night March, double colorless. Raichu, double colorless. Vespaquin, double colorless. Uh, mean Shao, uh, which is... Uh, fighting deck that is kind of like the new Dawn fan where they bring the him back to his hand. Can't play sh strong energy, can't change the stadium, can't add focus sashes, which he has to rely on to, to win. Can't play, uh, uh, and uh, we'll talk about how also how to beat that with our other attacker in a moment. 
So Chaos Will does 100, so it pretty much one-shots most of these Stage 1 e uh, stage one decks. And then they can't attach the double colorless. They can't play a stadium, and many times they're reliant on a stadium. Ra needs uh, Skyfield. Night March, Pumpkaboo usually needs um, Dimension Valley. So it really matches up well against these um, Stage 1 decks. Alright, our other t attacker that we're kind of teaming Giratina up with is Seismitoad EX. And in the beginning of the game, Seismitoad is actually one of our best, uh, one, the one we kind of want to start with because we can attach double colorless and a muscle band and we can start quaking punch on turn one. Now it's only going to hit for 50 and uh, since we're in standard format with these decks that I'm showing you, you're not going to be able to use laser bank. Okay, so Quaking Punch is really just a temporary thing to slow your opponent down. That's all we're using it for. After that, we want to get into the Giratina and just start taking knockouts, or at least hitting harder with the 100 to 120 level. So, Seismitoad, we use Quaking Punch. We don't ever use Grenade Hammer with this deck. He's just there to Quaking Punch. He item locks once he does that, and then the opponents can't... Uh, play any items which again is tool cards uh, which when I mentioned Mean Shao Seismitoad actually matches up better against that deck because then he can't play any tool cards or any item cards like Robo Substitute so Seismitoad Giratina that's basically the idea we're going to either lock their items or we're going to lock their special energy in their stadium and tool cards very nice both of them work really well together now we do have a couple supporters. Uh, one of them is Hoopa EX. In this deck, Scoundrel Ring, the ability just comes in really handy. We run into our first Ultra Ball, and we can Hoopa for a Giratina, a Seismitoad, and a Shaman. Uh, or if we already have a Seismitoad out, we can do two Giratinas or another Giratina. Well, however we feel the matchup best is going to work best, and then we can grab a Shaman, which will draw us more cards. So Hoopa comes in very handy if he's prized it makes it a little more challenging but it's not overwhelming um, so Hoopa EX and one thing is we also play a lot of cards that bring our Pokemon back to our hand like Super Scoop Up and AZ sometimes you need to bring Hoopa back out so he doesn't get Lysandered up fortunately though you can attach a double colorless and he'll um, and you can retreat that way if you can afford to spend the energy on him. Uh, but anyway, that's Hoopa for us. Alright, and then three Shamans. Uh, so we're playing three Giratina, three Seismitoad, three Shaman. Uh, Shaman's just there for setup. Uh, but also, there are times where we'll end up starting with Shaman. And so sometimes we have to Sky Return. There are other times where, I forget, there was a, a match I was playing the other day where they could not one shot me and they had already kind of taken out my Giratina but I knew they couldn't take out Shaman in one shot so I had basically two Shamans and I kept just putting double colorless muscle band, double colorless muscle band and I just kept rotating through them and I was only hitting for 50 each turn but I had already denied so much of their energy that they really weren't able to do more than like I think 50 or 60 damage per turn and so I, my shaman would just end up coming back to my hand and I put the next one up it would take a hit so there are even cases where shaman can be useful especially if you go like against fairies and you know um, you know, Rainbow Spear can knock Giratina out in one shot, but can't knock out Shaman in one shot unless they have a muscle band. So, those are just some things to consider. Shaman can still be used as an attacker in this deck. Alright, so this deck is totally about trolling your opponent. Energy denial, so we're playing four Crush Hammers right off the bat. You know, we want to, and hopefully we can flip heads. On average, if we do four crushing hammers a game, we should hit two heads. So that's going to take two of their energies off. And that right there can help us to, since Giratina takes two attachments to charge up.
that knocking off energy can help us to get Giratina in the game. And a lot of times, once the lock is in place, many times they, there's nothing they can do about it. So, Crushing Hammer, we play four of those. We do play two Enhanced Hammers. Now, you know, this might seem a little counterintuitive because Giratina's attack prevents them from playing Special Energy. However, because they're going to get probably two turns at least, they're probably going to put down Special Energy. And so it makes sense that we have a couple Enhanced Hammers so that we can knock off the Special Energy before we Chaos Wheel. And then they can't use any more special energy. So Enhanced Hammer playing two of those is extremely useful, very solid in this deck, and really, really good. Now we play one red card because we, because we don't have Laser Bank, we need to also put in a different type of disruption, and that is Hand Disruption. Now there's not a lot of cards. Now N used to be the premier Hand Disruption card. But now we only have Ace Trainer, and unfortunately Ace Trainer can only be used if we're behind. So even though we play one Ace Trainer in this deck, I like to play one red card. If you can get red card on turn one, and they still have six cards in their hand, four cards, even though there's a lot of draw power in these decks now, four cards might be give you just that one extra turn to get charged up uh, before they can get really set up and so red card can be very useful also because we don't have in sometimes people have really big hands and red carding them back down to four can really be uh you know tough on your opponent so we play one red card all right, uh, continuing on with the items, we play four Super Scoop Ups. This comes in very handy. We use it instead of Switch, and again, it's another flippy card. So that means, you know, if we're on a roll with heads, we can really do well. If we get a bunch of tails, not so well. But Super Scoop Up allows us to reuse Shamans over and over and over again. Um, also allows us to pick up a Toad or a Giratina that's been injured that maybe we haven't placed energy on. Maybe at the beginning of the game we're just tanking them and we can super scoop them up. Or if someone's um, Lysandered up our Hoopa, we can super scoop up the Hoopa. And then we don't even have, if we've already played it once, we probably will not need to play it again. So super scoop ups, really useful there. For Ultra Balls, we don't really use it a whole lot except mainly to get Hoopa out. And we want to have four of them so we can get into Hoopa very, very quickly and very early in the game. So uh, discard two cards and uh, then pick any Pokemon out of your deck that you want. So Hoopa is usually the one we grab. But we also can grab Shamans. We have three Shamans in the deck, so there may be times where we need to play another Shaman. Uh, so we can Ultra Ball, or we, you know, if we are in a tight match and we're getting knocked out, we're taking knockout, we may need to get another Giratina or Seismitoad ready to go. So, uh, Ultra Ball works real well for us there. Alright, let me go and continue on with our tool cards, and then we'll go to VS Seekers, because most people know what VS Seekers are. Um, muscle Band here, we're playing three of them. We've got to have damage enhancers because if we don't, we're just not going to do enough damage. Seismitoad without a Muscle Band, only going to hit for 30. So Muscle Band hits, allows us to hit for 50. So at least that Quaking Punch, you know, we can four shot something instead of 10 shot them, you know. <laughs> um, and then also Giratina. Very useful because with 100, we can't one-shot an opposing Shaman, but with 120, we can knock out an opposing Shaman. So Muscle Van on Giratina is very good. Also, this helps prevent us getting Head Ringered, so we have to have something on there to keep from being Head Ringered. We also play, speaking of Head Ringered, two of these ourselves. And again, this is just more about the energy disruption. If we're going against a Mega Deck or even a non Mega deck, just an EX deck, we can head ringer their main uh, attackers, um, and that's going to force them to have to take another turn of energy. Combine that with our hammers and with our supporters that take off energy, and now you're looking at sometimes they can't ever get the Pokemon rolling. So, uh, head ringer, really useful. We play two of those. We don't play more than that because. Again, we're playing so many stage one decks. And if you don't have Head Ringer, Jamming Net will work. 
Uh, I actually used that in uh, a play test locally and um, it actually worked pretty well. It kept someone from, instead of two-shotting me, it was going to take three turns to knock me out. So j jamming net can be useful too if you don't have the head ringers. I know they're a little bit more expensive. Uh, VS Seeker, this probably goes without saying, but uh, VS Seeker allows you to put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. Typically, whichever one we're planning on using, that's the one we use. So we go ahead and VS Seeker for whatever we need. Uh, so, so be that we, we can play four of those so we can reuse our supporters. Our supporters are very important to us. Um, so, we, but before we get to supporters, let's talk about the stadium. I play four Faded Town in this deck. You could play three um, and maybe add something somewhere else. But Faded Town is really good if we're going against Mega Evolutions like uh, Mega Rayquaza or Mega Manetric. Uh, they may still try to Hex Maniac and attack our Giratina even though it's... Um, even though it's... Um, can't be hurt by Megas, but if they use Hex Maniac, it shuts that ability off, and then they're able to. So Faded Town does 20 every turn. So at the end of my turn, it does 20 damage to a Mega, and then at the end of the opponent's turn, it does 20. So 40 for every one full turn really can add up quickly. I was playing someone in the league, and they got two Mega Ampharos out, and I just kept knocking off the energy and they ended up both fainting at the same time due to Faded Town while I was knocking out a third EX that was on the active slot I took six prizes all at once because of Faded Town now is that typical no but it is pretty fun when you get those kind of scenarios so Faded Town we play four of those and we play them also we play four because we want to counter stadium However, with Giratina, they can't change the stadium, so Faded Town can stick uh, if we can hold the Giratina in place for a good long while. All right, let's go over our supporter line and we'll and then our energy, and we'll be done. Uh, the supporter line. So the typical start: four Sycamores. Uh, discard your hand and draw seven. Um, resource management is very key in this deck. But there are just time like energy is really we are only playing seven energies in this deck, so we have to be very very careful with our energy supply. But Sycamore, discard your hand and draw seven. Excellent, excellent for our energy uh, to get through our deck quickly, and it's just typical everybody plays four of those. Lysander, I play typically two of these in a deck. You, you just can never go wrong with Lysander. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active Pokemon. So Lysander, he just wins you games many times. Lysander up that last Shaman on the bench and finish it off for two prizes. All right, because we're so limited on draw supporters, we play two Birches. Now we do have the three Shamans to help, so Birch... Uh, you know, the debate rages on Shauna or Birch, and I actually can see reasons for playing both of them, you know, in the same deck. You could do one Birch and one Shauna. One situation where Shauna does have an advantage is when you're getting ready to deck out, and you say you have uh, eight cards in your hand, all right? You via Seeker, now you only have seven, and you can either via Seeker for the Shauna or you can via Seeker for the Birch. Well, if you via Seeker for the Birch and you flip heads, you're going to just draw your seven back and then you're decked out. But if you play with Shauna, you're only going to get five cards and that gives you two more turns. So, there are some cases where Shauna is better, and I, I think sometimes a, a Standard five is uh, better than risking only getting four, you know. Uh, though I think most people, I think the consensus now is most people are leaning toward Birch. But that's just uh, their opinion. Um, you play what you feel more comfortable with and what's suitable with your personality and your risk-reward management there. All right, that's all of our draw supporters. I guess you could call Ace Trainers a draw supporter, but it's not really unless you get behind. Um, and so we can Ace Trainer put our opponent down to three cards. We still get to draw six, and um, it's kind of and then 
you know it's kind of like the new end but you can only use it if you're behind so we play one of those and every now and then it does come up and it's very useful and it can win games so uh, playing one of those doesn't hurt in this type of deck all right so now let's talk about some more of the trolley cards uh, so hex maniac we play one of these because we really have no way of getting through walls uh, so we have to Hex Maniac uh, or Lysander around walls. So Aegislash, Beautifly, Regiice, well, Regiice it won't do anything for. So if you get stuck with a Regiice, uh, you're going to have to Lysander up a bench or something like that. If he just tanks the Regiice, you may be just done. Unless, well, but again, we play Energy Disruption. So there may be a time where he won't get the attack. A good crushing hammer followed by a team flare grunt can really weaken opponent uh, very quickly. So uh, Hex Maniac, we use that. It's not used a lot in this deck, but it is used every now and then. We also play two team flare grunts, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. And the cool thing is if you can use this to knock out a special energy or a basic. So if you have an, let's say you're going against an opposing Giratina and they have a, du a double dragon and say a fire or a fairy or whatever they're using to charge it up uh, You can team flare grunt the fire energy and then you can enhance hammer the special energy and bring them back down to zero so a Very trolly card especially when you use it with hammers um, Zero sick is another one of those trolley cards. We play one of those and this can get rid of a tool card or a special energy um, But it doesn't have to be on the active you can actually use this on the bench So we can get rid of again a special in if we're playing a Vespa Queen deck get rid of that double colorless and then we can play chaos chaos will and guess what the Vespa Queen can't attach any more double colorless so they're going to have to take two turns to charge up Lysander the one up before it gets the second energy on and bye bye Vespaquin um, the other thing is that this works very good with also head ringer so we got a mega that we're going against get rid of his scrap his um, link spirit link put the head ringer on and guess what now that mega if it hasn't evolved yet uh, it's gonna have to take an extra turn just to evolve and if it has evolved now it's gonna have to take an extra energy just to attack so it can be useful zero sick very useful there it has multiple uses in the deck finally the one I guess you could call it trolley but it's really more just uh, it's kinda like the super scoop ups we'll play the AZ uh, do I play just one? No, I play two AZ. And the reason is, is there's we can AZ Shaman to get more cards, or we can uh, AZ something that's been Lysander to the active, or if our Seismitoad or Giratina is hurt, we can AZ. We may lose the energy, but we won't. They won't take the knockout on us. And if we have something on the bench ready to go, AZ can just be useful for us there. So uh, that's our final supporter that we play. And then let's just talk about our energies. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with seven, you can always maybe remove a red card or an extra AZ or Team Flare Grunt. Uh, but I feel seven is just fine with this deck. Four double colorless. All right, for the Toads. And then three double dragon. Now, the cool thing about Giratina is one double dragon and one double colorless will charge him up. Or two double dragons will charge him up. You're not going to usually have more than two Giratinas charged up in a game. Uh, if it if it goes that long, I mean, it's usually not going to happen that you'll have more than two. So that's why I only played the three, because let's say wor worst case scenario is I have to use two on the first Giratina, and then the second one gets the third one and a double colorless. Now you can say, yes, they may be prized, and that is possible, but... Usually, um, the games with this either go really short or really long. There's not really a mid-game here. It, it's, it's usually either you're trying to have to constantly get energy off your opponent, and uh, so you're not really taking any damage, but you're not really dishing out a whole lot of damage either. 
or you play Chaos Will and they just can't attach any more special energy and they concede the game. So that's pretty much how the games go. Uh, this is a very trolly deck, so if that's not your personality, don't play it. Uh, I kind of like this deck. It's just fun. Um, I never really got to be able to play Seismitoad a lot when it was before when Lysander Trump card was still in play. So this is kind of a, a way to get in using it. Uh, anyway, guys, that's the deck analysis. I actually have one more Giratina deck that I'm going to show you, and I think it may be the best of all of them. Uh, but I'm not, I'll probably show that. I'm going to try to get that out tomorrow. I also want to let you know that I'm probably going to, uh, have at least one or two other decks this week. I think I'm going to show a Metacham deck, and I don't know if it's going to be Metacham with Machamp or if we'll do Metacham Evolutions. I'm kind of leaning toward the Evolutions because it's a little more, um, let's say, uh, unique it's rogue i guess it's a rogue deck so it may not do very well but i'm you know me i'm known to kind of put some odd combinations together uh i also have been people have been asking me to do some budget decks so i may show that uh, mean shall deck uh because that doesn't use any shamans in it and it's fairly inexpensive to build so keep an eye out for that anyway uh, with that, guys, I'll sign off. This is Pokey Dad. Hit like, subscribe, and comment below. Tell me what you, uh, if you like this deck or if this deck is too trolly for you. You wouldn't play it and you wouldn't want to play against it. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Anyway, talk to you later, guys. Bye.